Joyce Fassel, Editor-in-Chief of Pro Food World at PMMI Media Group, and I'll be moderating this discussion. Plant cybersecurity is becoming a growing concern for OEM and CPG companies alike. Threats to plant information networks and interconnected machinery lines can have a negative impact on productivity. This webinar will help both parties understand the climate in which we operate today and the risks and potential rewards of remotely connected process and packaging machinery. The goal is to enable safe and secure remote diagnostics and assistance by the suppliers of current and future equipment in manufacturing plants. This results in improved operational excellence and supplier value. PMMI's OPEX Solutions Group for Secure Vendor Access is a team of CPG and OEM subject matter experts from more than 20 companies who are sharing their expertise by developing these much needed industry guidelines. Now before I introduce our speakers, I want to let our audience members know that this webinar will also be available for archived viewing at profoodworld.com. You will receive notification when it's ready and the slides will be available for download from there as well. Please feel free to ask questions at any time during the webinar by typing your question into the questions pane of the GoToWebinar control panel. We will take some time at the end of the presentation to address as many questions as time allows. Today's webinar is being sponsored by Promoc. So let's get started um, by introducing our speakers. Robert Dargy started with Amway as an industrial master electrician in 2007. And since then, he has moved into engineering and is now currently a senior electrical engineer. Rob Dargy developed the global Ethernet control network standard for Amway Corporation and leads those installations. In addition, he has been involved in many multi-million dollar packaging line and process installations throughout his career at Amway. Mark Ruberg, Vice President at Promoc, is traveling outside the country today and is not able to join the webinar. Filling in for Mark is Steve Schlegel, Managing Director of PMMI's OPEX Leadership Network. So now I'd like to turn it over to Steve Schlegel to begin the presentation. Thanks, Joyce, and welcome everybody uh, to this uh, next uh, webinar from the OPEX Leadership Network. And we very much appreciate Promoc's uh, support of this and and frankly, the entire industry, because this is a very important and timely topic. So today, uh, what we're going to go through from an agenda standpoint is I'm gonna bring everybody up to speed on the OPEX Leadership Network, uh, where we've come in uh, uh, the past eight years. And then from the Secured Vendor Solutions Group, we'll discuss uh, the issues, the opportunity itself, what we're trying to achieve, and share with you the tools that we are developing uh, to help uh, your companies address this important issue. So from a standpoint of who is uh, PMMI's OPEX Leadership Network, we're a community of uh, manufacturing, engineering, and operations professionals who have come together to share collective experiences in a collaborative way to solve common non-proprietary, non-competitive issues in CPG manufacturing. So to date, there are over 250 companies of CPGs and uh, PMMI member companies who have participated in the development of these practices. And through the generosity of PMMI, it's, it, we're proud to say that all of these best practices are available for free download uh, from the industry, and I'll show you that in just a minute. The OPEX Leadership Network was founded by PMMI in 2011, and to date, we have developed uh, and published over 16 documents, best practices and guidelines and resources for the general use of the industry. As you take a look at the, the uh, image in front of you, this wheel, we've divided it into three parts people, process, and technology. And let me touch on one of each to help give you a flavor of what, those, uh, what these represent. Uh, at the top of your screen, you're seeing workforce engagement. Uh, in this area, it is the development of your existing, uh, very uh, important people assets in the organization to have greater performance and output and reliability and 
and uh, quite frankly, enthusiasm for their uh, jobs and, and the work that they do. On the right of your screen is process. One of the key items in this process area is a, a document, one of our first publications, is, hyge is the uh, validation of the kill steps of salmonella in low moisture foods. This has been recognized by the FDA as an industry go-to resource, and quite frankly, the FDA uses it to uh, in their training sessions and recognizes it in the FISMA document uh, uh, as it relates to uh, this very important topic. Right next to that is CIP. And I just want to make a quick call out on the CIP document because we have just completed the peer review process uh, of this new document which will be uh, available, published, and made available to uh, on the OPEX website in, uh, in just a matter of a few weeks. And then to the left of your screen is technology. And in technology, that is really focused on the capital spend. So here we're looking at areas like factory acceptance tests and total cost of ownership. Uh, those documents combine actually all 16 documents when you roll it all up there have been over 8,000 downloads uh, of these uh, very valuable presentations I'd like to take you to the the link that I just went to is the OPEX leadership network and here you can see on your screen uh, the home page of the OPEX leadership network and where you can download not only the publications but get valuable information and insights to help you in your journey for operational excellence. So coming back to the presentation, what I'd like to share with you now is identify those 20 or so companies that Joyce mentioned who we very much value their participation and guidance and leadership in the Secured Vendor Access Solutions Group. As you can see, it's a very diverse group, large and small companies alike and we very much uh, appreciate what they have brought to the table and that's quite frankly the efforts of their work it's a work in process that you're going to be seeing uh, as in the remainder of of the presentation today so what we're going to be sharing with you is where we're at and give you a glimpse as to when will this be published uh, for your use so as you can see on your screen the goal, and, and Joyce uh, referenced it in her opening comments, is that we're trying to create something that both the CPGs and the suppliers uh, can benefit and have a mutually benefit uh, relationship in the industry on this particular topic. Uh, we want to be able to enable the safe and secure remote diagnostics uh, that in in essence would relate would result in improved operational performance and value to the suppliers fundamentally we're calling our work product a best value options analysis what we intend for that to convey is this is a document to help the conversation between the technical community the IT and engineering community who has to work together to develop these solutions, but also to the non-technical uh, professional, the business folks in your company so that they can uh, make a better informed decision uh, as they guide uh, your companies going forward. So keep that topic in mind, the, the thought of best value options analysis to enable you to have a better decision-making process. So with that, let's take a look at what we're talking about. Here you're seeing the overview, and what I'm gonna do is give you the overview and then hand this off to Rob in just a minute or two so he can share with you in greater detail <clears throat> what is in particular uh, the pluses and minuses of each of these approaches. <coughs> excuse, excuse me. <clears throat> but as you can see here, that what we have is basically six different methodologies uh, from very sophisticated to the more uh, standard and routine. <clears throat> the way to help us communicate the best value options analysis 
is this grid. A, a good way to look at this grid of uh, the six methodologies <clears throat> balanced against down the left column the attributes, this will help you ascertain from a least to most scenario. So let me give you an example. So as you look down the left-hand column, you can see the skills required to install, select, install, and train on a particular uh, methodology. So in the, one me the first one that you see, Direct VPN has four computer screens on it. That indicates that that is the most complex in this regard, the most skills required. Whereas right below that, the OT skills required, the operating technologies, that it's pretty uh, straightforward to use. So if you will, uh, this is modeled after if you use Open Table, for example, and you see one dollar sign, you know it's going to be the least cost uh, restaurant. Or if you see three or four dollar signs, now you know it's going to be the higher end of the scale, the most cost, and so on down the line. So we've broken this into the technology skills required, both IT and OT, the acquisition cost and operating cost, the reliability of that particular method, and what you're looking at there is chain links. So how strong is that chain, if you will? And then the protection, both the operational protection, and by that we mean the protection to the enterprise within the four walls of manufacturing. And then the business protection, which is getting up into the business enterprise. And finally is the value proposition, as you see on the bottom row, and that really is left blank because that's up to you. This is sort of a guideline to help you have the dialogue and encourage that dialogue to occur within your company. So with that, I would like to bring uh, introduce you to Rob Darji from Amway, who will uh, take it from here. Rob? Yeah, thank you, Steve. Uh, I guess we'll dive right in. So the very first one is the, the direct VPN. Um, and uh, pretty simplistic. Uh, we can move to the next there. Uh, Thank you. Um, so the, some of the benefits, leveraging uh, the external partners and the speed to the solution is very easy. Um, some of the risk, we'll talk about password management um, and also uh, updating users. This seems to be a, a pain point with DirectVPN. And let's move to the, uh, the technical. So basically what we're looking at here is that we got an outside vendor and uh, they VPN to the enterprise of a VPN portal of the CPG. and uh, Based on the credentials, they're able to get to the certain network that they need to, to that, uh, that piece of equipment. Now we can move to the next one. So the best value option analysis here, um, again, the IT skills to set up a VPN, and I think we're all used to VPNs. We VPN into our own networks to uh, uh, work from home, if you will, or work on site. But uh, it takes a lot of skill from the IT network to set one of those up. But once you do, um, it's easy to VPN in. You use your own VPN software that's already installed on your laptop. And the reliability of the method uh, for this is, is uh, it's pretty strong, but uh, we'll go into some connectivity things here. So basically there's two types of VPN. You've got connectivity, uh, continuous and transactional. And uh, some of the cons are very high level of IT support to both the OEM and on the CPG side to install and support. Support, um, when you have continuous. There's also some issues that arise from ownership of data and storage issues. Um, who's going to have that? Who's going to manage it? But some of the pros too is uh, leveraging service support and speed. The CPG has access to OEM for very fast assistance from an SME standpoint. So there's some, there's some pros there. Uh, the transactional, uh, some of the cons to transactional it's a challenge for OEMs to manage many different versions of the VPN. So uh, you're an SME at the OEM, and now you have to have, uh, for instance, on your computer, one CPG is using Juniper, and another CPG is using uh, Pulse. So you've got to have m multiple uh, VPN uh, softwares, if you will. Um, password management, that can be problematic at times cons and consuming as well. 
Um, when an OEM is called for service, their credentials may have expired or have been lost, causing uh, service delay. So that takes time to get those back from an IT department. And hopefully that they're, they're working 24-7 rather than just uh, uh, eight hours a day. Some of the pros to this, though, this type of VPN is very easy to use. So just sign in. Where are we at? The next slide. So here what we have is a, a direct VPN, but we're adding what they call a converged network in the CPG site. This, uh, the benefits are definitely that it is more secure, um, very expensive, um, high, t, uh, high IT level of skill required, and uh, the vendor adoption is, uh, is also a risk as well. So we'll go into the uh, technical side. Um, you got a couple of vendors on the internet part of the zone, and again, they VPN in. But what you see here now is that the enterprise is really broken down into so what we call micro-segmentation. Multiple VLANs, uh, firewalls, DMZs are created, and uh, you can also talk across this network uh, with the right IT skills put in place. But uh, we're creating roadblocks, if you will, with this, this type of converged network. So some of the attributes. Uh, High IT again because of the uh, converged network, uh, the OT skills, um, maintaining uh, whether that's your firewall holes and, and policies in place is, is rather extensive. The cost can be upfront, can be uh, a lot in just in hardware and operating too as well. But the reliability of this method is very strong and uh, adds a lot of security to your, your infrastructure, if you will. And both on the OT and the IT, one of the, benef uh, one of the things that also the reason why we put four links or four locks on each one of these is there's a lot of upwards and downwards security built into converged network. So I'll go into the hardware uh, required. Um, the Purdue model for industrial control network design will involve hardware such as multiple firewalls externally and internally, layer three switches, and servers inside a DMZ. There's, a, uh, there's an elevated level of IT and controls engineering expertise to install and support this as well. Um, access restricted to appropriate network and equipment by vendor. Uh, Micro-segmentation converts a large network into smaller networks, even down to the equipment. Uh, by using network tools such as software policies and LDAP groups and network security, Specific individuals and uh, OEMs are allowed to access to any defined micro-segmented area. Um, with DMZ servers, uh, vendors challenged, uh, downward, like I said, downward and upward roadblocks or virtual fences, I think, if you will, are created with firewalls and VLANs. So the next, uh, next attribute. We have cell modem access. This is kind of a legacy uh, um, technology, if you will, but uh, it's very easy to do, um, rather hard to monitor, and uh, it's very vulnerable if you connect that machine to your network. Basically, we'll go to the technical. Uh, and what we mean is that uh, so you can see that there is a, uh, a modem down there and it's connected to a machine, but Watch out, you connect to that uh, layer two switch, your machine to your network, um, that's as if the firewall to your, uh, out to the outside world doesn't even exist. You've created a hole in your network. Skills, rather easy uh, on both. Um, acquisition cost, it's the cost of the modem. Um, operating cost. It's just your uh, your monthly bill to uh, your your wireless carrier, but uh, connectivity and circumvents all security firewalls. Um, if the machine is connected to your network, like we said, it is now a hole behind your firewall. Um, connectivity, high quality vari uh, variable. Location of the modem may limit cell tower connectivity. So. It, 
it can be rather challenging sometimes. You know, um, and it's easy to connect. So where, there, where these might even be used today, though, they still have their use. The, probably locations where equipment may be remote, for example, you don't have any kind of infrastructure to get out to, say, maybe a well pump station way out on your property or something. There's just no way to physically wire to that. So there's, there's, they still have their use. But uh, move to the next one. So the black box. Um, Basically, it's a private cloud infrastructure, and it's a device that uh, is in the machine. Um, some of the benefits, low, re very low reliance on IT resources, uh, and uh, the comlink can be made on demand. Um, password management, or it's a lot of default passwords out there that are never taken care of. And um, uh, updating users, uh, same thing. So we'll move to the... We have a machine here. Um, we're showing a connection to the enterprise WAN, but it can also be to the industrial control system. So you can, uh, if you have a converged network, but uh, with the black black box, basically this device, it uh, most black boxes um, they call out to the internet, and that's how they make their connection. And it's allowed through your uh, network. It should look like just like web traffic. So we'll move to the next slide. Not a lot of IT skills required, typically, um, to install and operate. Acquisition costs are very low on, on the hardware. And operating, it, it, it doesn't take any skills at all. The reliability of the method is it's fairly strong because you start the conversation with inside your CPG going out to the outside world. Um, operational protection is, is pretty strong, too, as well, because it's uh, only allowed on the private side of this network that's created, and business-wise, too, as well, you're protected. Talk about the leadership guidance. Uh, continuous connection creates vulnerable access. Again, if the black box is being used for continuous data collection or management by the OEM, this creates a vulnerable access to the machine and the network. Um, also. Password management, OEM users sharing credentials. Like I said, uh, a lot of the OEMs are taking advantage of the black box for free cloud server account by sharing sign-in credentials. So user management is now a threat. The CPG really has no control over those OEM users. Um, most of the black boxes, uh, communication phone home server or to even a cloud server. So most, if not all black boxes, have some sort of phone home to an OEM server or cloud server. Black boxes are not recommended for continuous, but rather transactional. So from a security standpoint, black boxes should be inhibited always and only turned on at the time of need. Uh, emergency troubleshooting, data dumps, or maybe software updates to the, to the machine itself. Uh, the business risk is low by allowing the CPG to control the enable of the device um, at their discretion, and the communication originated with the CPG. Um, another benefit is some black boxes offer NAT, uh, network address translation, so it can fit into the CPG network and only allow the OEM to see those permitted addresses. The NAT allows an easier translation or mapping to a CPG equipment private, private IP address. So it fits into the network, if you will. Finally, the bad boy, technician on site. So we pretty much all use this. It's, uh, it's pretty easy to do, uh, but there's a lot of compromised security uh, with a technician on site. The value and analysis here. Uh, the first three are not even applicable to this, but the operating cost, they're very high, and we'll go into that with the equipment downtime. Um, reliability of the method, uh, we only give it one link, and that's because of the time it takes to get somebody to your site. And uh, protection, uh, there is no protection on your operational side. Maybe, hopefully, you've 
put some things in place for your business protection. But when it comes to it, uh, equipment, you know, to get a technician to your site, it takes time. Equipment down and the expenses of the technician equates to an ex excessive cost. Um, also, the, the, the technicians more than likely will need to connect to the equipment with their respective laptop, therefore creating some vulnerability for the network. Their laptop could have some viruses on it and uh, unaware, un, unaware to the uh, CPG. Um, strict screening policies enforcement required. So there should be something in your, in your business. Uh, there must be some sort of screening or outside equipment, uh, even outside equipment, whether that be laptops or even old packaging equipment if it's being installed. Um, it may have some old malware on it. Uh, that stuff should all be screened before being connected to your network. Um, some CPGs will not even allow outside laptops. Uh, CPGs will need to have policies or solutions in place for these technicians to visit. And, uh, but using the technician is still widely used, especially during installs. Uh, we still have to have that technician on site when you're doing your SAT and he's, he's troubleshooting and doing run, run out in, installing that machine on your site. Finally, that brings us to our last uh, uh, external managed and secured network. So what we have here is kind of similar to what we just saw on the black box, but there's this external managed secured network. Some of the benefits, a very high level of security. Uh, very easy to manage, and I'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, requires a third-party specialist provider. So this, this, this is a third party that we're talking about. So what we got here is uh, on the CPG on the very right side, and in between is the external managed secured network, kind of a software network, if you will. A uh, service technician from an OEM uh, can uh, log into this network and uh, based upon their credentials are able to get to the machine that's into the, the right, the CPG there on the right. Also something to note here too is that uh, the CPG, similar to the black box, they install boxes. You see them, uh, they can be individual to a machine. Those are highlighted in red there. Or, or say you have uh, one OEM that might have three machines, they can install a, a VPN green box, if you will, that can get to that network. And the difference here is um, rather than the black box being inhibited, on here these are connected all the time to that external management secured network. So we'll move to the next one. IT skills uh, required. So it, there's a lot of IT skills required here. Uh, basically what you're doing is you've got two IT departments. You've got your internal IT department and you've got this external partner. And there has to be, and it is, it is a, an extremely trusted partnership that's required here. So it, to, to set up, it, it takes some time. OT is nothing more than a subscription to this uh, external partner. Um, acquisition costs. There may be some costs put uh, for the black or for the boxes. Um, the reliability of this method is probably very robust. Uh, and what I mean by that is that uh, again, all the equipment is connected to this external management and being monitored by them. Um, from an operational protection, uh, you've got your converged network infrastructure on the CPG side. And you've also got this software converged network. So the security on the operational and the business side is, is very high. I'll go to the leadership guidance here. Similar to the black box. Um, not only can you have a CPG site co uh, converged network, but also the external cloud-based partner. Uh, this is something new, which has a software-defined network. It's, it's very... Uh, it's very similar in design, only software managed. Uh, the external managed secure network provider has VPN appliances, uh, boxes, um, installed in the CPG site. Uh, the, 
the uh, IT user administration outsourced. And like I said, if, um, if you have a small IT department, maybe maybe a couple of guys that are your IT admin, this is something to, to uh, partner with. Uh, you're talking about a, a, an outside source that uh, has expertise in this area. So the external managed secure network partner has management control of the OEM's connectivity based upon the CPG's permission and control too. So you, you can set up your requirements. Uh, reliability users, yeah, it's always audited. So your, 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 your connectivity is always audited. There are statistics that come with this. Um, evaluate the control of external access on a continuous basis based on the trusted partnership relationship. The connectivity of the CPG site equipment can now be tracked continuously. And this is, this is something, they've, and some of these external managed secure networks offer a multitude suite of tools that you can use. I think that brings us to the end. Okay, now we'd like to take some questions from our audience. Um, the first question um, is for Rob, and this person wants to know, what are the roles of engineering and IT in selecting and implementing a converged network? Yeah, good question. Um, it seems like in, in past experiences, um, uh, IT and controls engineering were two isolated departments that didn't work well with each other. And uh, IT has been around for 30 years working on, on Ethernet issues. And this has really now come down to controls engineering that we're connecting all of our devices. You've heard of Internet of Things. And so it's really, you've got to develop that partnership within your own company between the two departments to develop some of these standards. It's, it's just required in order to get this accomplished. Yeah, I and Joyce, I'd like, yeah, I'd like to add a little uh, more color commentary to that. I, I just returned from a, from a conference, uh, and, we're, and the focus of the conference was digital transformation. And as Rob had just identified, that uh, the, there's an absolute need of the IT and engineering and OT all working together uh, in a seamless way in order to fully take advantage of this transformation to a, uh, a digital world. And <clears throat> manufacturing is beginning, CPG manufacturing is beginning in that regard but it really underscores the value here of this secure vendor access uh, approach of having a dialogue both internally, but also externally with your supplier partners. Okay, our next question says, uh, can you use multiple methodologies at the same location? Rob, do you think you could take that one? Yes, yes, it, it's actually recommended uh, to, to have the converged network, to have all these different methodologies in place. Um, combining all of them just adds roadblocks. You're trying to create as many roadblocks for that outside external, uh, uh, whether it's a state uh, state or some sort of, uh, who knows, uh, person that's trying to infiltrate your, your, your uh, network. The viruses up, and you want to try to create upwards and downwards security at the same time. Okay, our next question um, is about insurance. And it says, since this involves risk management and cybersecurity, how do you think the insurance industry will respond to these guidelines? Joyce, I'll, Steve, I'll take that can one. Can you take that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I will. And uh, what I'd like to share with the audience is as we've been, as the team, the Secured Vendor Access Solutions Group team has been developing this, uh, we've had a couple of opportunities to bring in uh, experts, subject matter experts from the insurance industry, major carriers and uh, also uh, companies that represent, who represent those carriers to to get their insights and understanding of how we are doing and how this is communicating. And this is, it, it's uh, an emerging topic for sure, 
the insurance industry has been very forthcoming and very helpful and have agreed to continue to help behind the scenes, if you will, to review uh, some of these work products. Um, so I, I would say um, it's very much in alignment, and I would think uh, from a CPG standpoint, communicating internally with your risk management folks and your uh, CFO folks who interact with the insurance uh, community to help bring them into the dialogue will be very, very helpful. Well, I'd like to thank Rob and Steve for a great presentation today on secure vendor access. And I'd also like to thank our sponsor, Promoc. And for the latest news about engineering and operations in food and beverage manufacturing, and to view news about our upcoming webinars, visit profoodworld.com. Thank you for attending this presentation and have a great day.